Hello, fellow nerd cut readers. This is Liblora Five, and I just put my little cupcake down for a nap. Mr. Five and the Bud are taking a bike ride, so I'm taking a few minutes to record a video about the 1953 Caldecott Award winner and honor books. And I really feel like I'm getting to a point in the list. Having started with 1938, now I'm up to 1953, and I'm feeling like I'm getting to a point in the list where things that I love about picture books are really coming through. And so let me tell you what I like about the books that I just read for 1953. And first we've got The Biggest Bear by Lind Ward. And one thing I like about this book is just the topic. What kid hasn't thought about having a wild animal for a pet? And this takes takes a look at it and... um. And what, what might that really be like to have, find a baby bear and try and keep it for a pet? What might those problems be? But I also love, well, one thing I don't love is that my damage is, my, my copy is very smelly. It has some water damage that's been noted here. But I also love the facial expressions in this, this book. The illustrations really have depth. If you look at this picture, it's just black ink with a little brown overlaid, but it has a lot of depth. Um, and good use of white space, really drawing your eye certain ways. And I like how Johnny is going to go on this adventure here. And he looks so small. And the angle, the angle on this picture makes him look even smaller with his gigantic gun. He's out there and he finds this baby bear. And I also love the action in a lot of pictures too. Here, I can just hear the chickens all squawking to get away from this baby bear. But a nice realistic look about what this bear isn't going to stay a baby forever and what problems might that cause. And the book definitely has a happy ending, but there are some some serious discussions that the family has and they come to terms with the fact that this it's not going to be okay for a bear to feel like it can really be part of human society. And it does end happily, but um, but some some tough, tough decisions in this book that the family is trying to deal with. But I really like the illustrations in that book. The text to picture ratio, the text and the pictures are really supporting each other, which hasn't always been the case in these early books. And next up, I've got Puss in Boots by Marsha Brown. Kind of that trickster tale of Puss, Puss, um, helping his master and tricking the king. And I the illustrations feel a little bit more haphazard and free, but I love every time the cat is in one of the illustrations. I love the cat's face as we go through here. And there's some more of the cat. And one thing that did make me smile is at the very end of this book, after Puss in Boots has kind of tricked the king into thinking lots of lots of different things about his master. Then, after drinking five or six glasses of wine, the king says that his master may marry his daughter. I, I it just made me smile, because I don't think in any picture book today they're going to talk about anybody having five or six glasses of wine before they do something. Probably get called on the carpet for that one. But there, I like that picture of the cat, too. The little smirk little slyness in, in his face. And then we've got One Morning in Maine by Robert McCloskey, which I felt a strong personal connection to because of my two kids. And the oldest daughter in this book is losing her first tooth. And she is so, first she's very worried about what's going on, then she's very excited, and she's telling animals about her tooth that she's losing, and she goes out and meets her dad to dig clams, and she's telling him about it. He ends up, she ends up losing her tooth in the mud and they can't find it. But then they head off to town in their boat and all the men who hang out at the shop in town are, are oohing and eyeing at her tooth and giving her a little bit of a hard time. But I love the just the true to childhood sort of actions and the illustration here that just really captures the wiggles and excitement for ice cream I love the little sister who's just trying to get up there, but she can't. And thank goodness they're wearing their life jackets while they're boating. I appreciated that. But really reminded me of a realistic, realistic kids, and particularly my own kids. And I love this last picture 
of the dad and the kids boating back to their house. And the little sister totally reminds me of my cupcake in this, in this picture. Um, but just a sweet story that has just really true to life, uh, kid action, kid feelings. And then we have Ape in a Cape, an alphabet of odd animals by Eichenberg right here. And I like this alphabet book. It has unique and fun rhymes. Every page is a rhyme. Uh, like here we've got ape in a cape. And then bear in despair. Carp with a harp. Really simple format, well executed. And I especially like, here let me get to, I liked T-U, let's get to V. I really liked Vulture with Culture. Little disappointed in X and Z. X is for Rex. Uh, okay, I like Rex is a king, but X is for doesn't fit with the pattern of the other ones. And then the last one, Z is for Zoo. So in alphabet books, those are always the hard ones to figure out what, what's going to happen with those letters. But other than that, um, nice nice pattern, well-executed, fun alphabet book with ape and a cape there. The Storm Book by Zolotow. This one kind of goes back in time with its feel a little bit. You have a double-page spread of just text. Then you have a double-page spread of pictures. And I do, although I... I I feel like this one doesn't feel quite as modern as the other ones. What I do like about this one is I love the feel of the storms in the illustrations with the the bending of the this entrance way here is just slightly tipped the trees I can just feel the wind, the rain, it feels cold. And here's an illustration of the storm in the city. Just that that feeling conveyed of the storm Here's at sea. You can almost just feel the wetness that might be hitting you. So I, I do like that about the illustrations in this book. And last, we have Five Little Monkeys. Very simplistic illustrations in this book. This is a fun trickster tale about five monkeys, which is a good number, and let me find the monkeys' names here. We've got Buzzo, Binky, Bulu, Bibi, and Bali. So fun names, simple style pictures. One thing I don't like is sometimes the text, which is dark black, ends up on a dark blue. I won't be able to find it now. Maybe it'll... On a darker color making it harder to read. But um, I think a, a good trickster tale, um, simple pictures, but this one was another copy that was a little bit smellier than the rest. And the tricksters end up saving the day in the end, which is a fun thing. And along with the 1953 Caldecott Winner in Honor Books. I have a new favorite that I have here, Chloe and the Lion. I just read this for the first time the other day by Mac Barnett and Adam Rex. And I love the play within a play feel of this book. And here we've got Mac. And it starts off, this is me, Mac. I'm the author of this book. And it goes right into a play within the play sort of feel. We've got Mac and Adam who are kind of clay posable dolls photographed in the forefront of what looks like a stage really carrying out that play within a play sort of feel and then there's Chloe who is the main character of the story that they are putting together. I am definitely going to be using this with kids when I talk about authors and illustrators and the difference and what they do to create books because this is just a really funny way to demonstrate that. I like the different types of illustrations that are are put together into this book with Mac and Adam being one style of illustration. Then you have the set on the stage, but on then adding the drawing, the layer of drawing with Chloe and the other things that are happening in the story there. And I will add 
a link to the book trailer or embed the book trailer for this book because the book trailer is really clever and funny as well. So a new favorite of mine, Chloe and the Lion, and I, I wish great things for this book currently. So happy reading, everybody.